Hello, welcome back to Into Touch. Today we'll be doing the KCPE Science 2019. So if you are just joining us, hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell so that you can get updates from us. So question one says, which one of the following pairs of human body part is used for breathing? Lungs is for breathing, the esophagus is not for breathing, so this is wrong. Nose and trachea is for breathing, so this is correct. Diaphragm and stomach, stomach is digestive, so this is wrong. Nose and esophagus, the esophagus is for the digestive system, so this is wrong. So the correct answer here is um, B. Okay, so now question two says, which one of the following waste products is excreted by the lungs? What excretes salts? So you excrete salt through your skin, that's sweat. So urine, um, th this is from the bladder. The bladder excretes urine. Sweat is also skin, while lungs, this is for excess water. So when you breathe out, you breathe out water and carbon dioxide. So the lungs excrete water and CO2. So that's the answer to number two question. Okay, so number three says, which one of the following pairs of disease only consists of sexually transmitted infections? You know the sexually transmitted infections, they are called STDs. Now, um, gonorrhea is an STD, but malaria is not an STD, so this is wrong. HIV is an STD, but measles is not an STD, so this is wrong. Syphilis, it's an STD. Cancroid is also an STD, so the correct answer here is C. Bilazia, it's not an STD, but gonorrhea is an STD, so this is wrong. Bilazia, it's um, a, it's caused by parasitic worms, so it's not gotten from, it's not a sexually transmitted disease. So the correct answer is C. Question first says, which of the following is the third stage of HIV infections? If you study the HIV life cycle, you understand it has about four stages, which are listed here. So um, the last stage is actually the full-blown stage. The third stage is the symptomatic. That is when you start displaying symptoms. First of all, there is the incubation stage. That's the first stage. There is the asymptomatic stage, which is also known as the window stage. So in this question, the correct answer for the third stage is the symptomatic stage. So that will take us to question number five. Now question five says, which one of the following components of the environment is the main source of energy for living things? Now, this is a very confusing question. A whole lot of people have been asking me about this question all this while. Now, what do you really think? It says, which one of the following is the main components of environment? Which one of the following components of the environment is the main source of energy for living things? Remember that living things are made up of both plants and animals. So, where do plants draw their energy from? Where do animals draw their energy from? Is it? It can be plants. Is it air? Is it water? Is it soil? So, where we draw our energy from is water. Now, I will tell you why. Every animal is made up of over... Our body is made up of over 70% food. Same thing with plants. Squeeze a plant, you're going to get over 60% food. So, that is why... That is why um, the main source of our energy is water and not air. So the correct answer here is C. Okay, question 6 says, which one of the following least pollutes the soil? Now let's begin to look at things that pollute the soil. Um, excess fertilizer, yes, when you do fertilizer in excess, it's going to pollute the soil. So this is wrong. Ice spillage is pollute the soil a lot, so this is wrong. Kitchen leftovers, actually, they are manure, and they are natural manure, so when you use them, it doesn't pollute the soil that much. So, this is rather a manure to the soil. Mining pollutes the soil. Fertilizers are, do add manure to the soil, but in excess, they pollute the soil. So, the correct answer here, it's um, C. Okay? So, the article to question 7, which says, the soil that cracks easily when dry has what? Now, which soil do you know that cracks easily when, when dry? It's called what? Clay soil. And what are the properties of clay soil? The properties of clay soil, one of the properties is it has what? Um, small particles. 
when you check a clay soil, when you touch it, you notice that the particles are very, very small. So that is why um, a clay soil has small particles. It doesn't have low capil uh, capillarity, rather a clay soil has high capillarity because it allows what um, it, it holds water. Large airspace, a clay soil has small airspace, that's why it can hold also it can hold water and it has a smooth texture, so not a rough. So the correct answer in number seven, it's B. Now question eight says the diagram below shows a setup used to investigate a certain component of soil. Now this is an experiment. So it says the component of the soil that was invest that was investigated is what? Now look at the diagram. If you notice in our diagram, there's a cold water here, there is a bowl, there's a glass container. Now this is our garden soil and their heat is applied here. Now notice when you hit this place, when you heat, apply heat, everything, most organisms here, because this place will become hot, they will start moving towards this place. If there is an earthworm or any organism, it will migrate to this place, to the cooler part of the water. So this is to investigate the living organisms living in the soil. So that takes us to question um, 9, which is which one of the following pairs, which one of the following pairs or types of soil erosion forms V-shaped ditches? Now, first of all, um, we know here that um, a sheet for a gully, a gully it's like when um, a large surface of water cuts deep into the ground, therefore forming a V-shaped gully. So when you see a gully, it forms a V-shape. Same thing applies to real. Real it's when a concentrated form of water erodes the surface of the soil, thereby forming a V-shape. So gully and real forms a V-shape. But for sheet erosion, sheet erosion just removes the surface of the water, while splash erosion just is just like when water splashes on the ground, displacing the soil particles. It doesn't form a V-shape. So the correct answer in question nine. It's A. Now, question 10 says, which one of the following nutrition deficiencies is more likely to be suffered by the mothers of newly born baby? Kwashoko is suffered by the children because of uh, protein malnutrition. Marasmus has to do with carbohydrate malnutrition. Anemia is lack of blood. Now, who suffers lack of blood is the mom. When she gives baby, she loses blood. Therefore, she suffers from lack of blood. So, the correct answer is C. Ricket is as a result of lack of vitamin D in children, causing um, maybe them not to have strong bones and um, soft skeletons, or maybe a bow leg, a bow leg shape, um, shape. So the correct answer in question ten is C.